Greetings, I'm Paul, and I'm 35 years old. A few years back, I tied the knot with Emily. And as the saying goes, marrying someone also means you kind of marrying their family. In my situation, that family included Lisa, my mother-in-law. Now, I'm all for family connections, but Lisa had a knack for irritating me and making me second-guess myself. It was as though I was stuck in a never-ending cycle of her criticisms and jibes. Tough situation, right? But, driven by love for Emily, I endured all the drama that came with Lisa, keeping my peace. I was resolved not to let her negative energy affect our marriage, because Emily was worth every bit of the effort. Over time, I noticed a shift in Emily. She became more distant and seemed preoccupied. Something was off. One evening, as we were cozying up on the sofa, I gathered up the courage to address it. Hey love, I've noticed you've been somewhat remote. Is everything okay? As I sat there with Emily, I could tell she was battling with her thoughts. Her expression was a mix of frustration and sadness. After pausing for a bit, she sighed and began to open up. Paul, I love you, but I feel like something is missing in our relationship, she confessed. My mind spun, trying to grasp what she was hinting at. I couldn't pinpoint what she meant despite racking my brains for possible issues. So I asked for clarity. What do you mean? I thought we were solid. Emily's response was unexpected. It's just... I don't have the same admiration for you that I used to. I miss the days when we were thriving when money wasn't a concern, and we had everything, she admitted. Her acknowledgement struck me deeply. It was hard to accept that our relationship might be reduced to financial status. This revelation was a real eye-opener. I was stunned to realize that our love might be entangled with materialistic expectations. Hearing Emily's focus on finances over our connection threw me into a storm of emotions, frustration, pain, and bewilderment all at once. Really? Since when did money become the cornerstone of our relationship? We share a bond far richer than my wallet's contents. We've nurtured something genuine and profound, something that vastly surpasses mere material wealth, I tried to convey, hoping to remind her of the true essence of our love. Paul, I get where you're coming from, but I can't shake off how I feel. I miss the sense of security and the lifestyle we once enjoyed. Emily admitted. It was a constant tug of war between love and frustration, a blend of feelings that refused to align no matter how much we discussed. The stark reality became apparent as the night wore on. Our marriage was teetering on the edge. I was at my wit's end with her materialistic view. It was baffling. The woman in front of me felt like a stranger. Love, I believed, was about mutual support and understanding through thick and thin. Unfortunately, things spiraled from there. Gradually, I grew disillusioned with Emily's focus on materialism. Love evolves, and I realized my feelings for her had transformed. The initial spark had faded, and no amount of wealth could fill the growing void. This awakening led me to no longer tolerate Lisa's negativity. I was primed for confrontation, and confrontations became intense. Arguments erupted frequently, shattering any semblance of peace. One evening, as we gathered for what was supposed to be a harmonious family dinner, the air was fraught with tension, thick enough to slice through. All eyes were on the verge of witnessing an outburst. Lisa, with a glass of wine in hand, turned to me. Paul, dear, I don't mean to be harsh, but when will you take charge of your career? It's time you provided more for my daughter. Her words only reinforced the resemblance between mother and daughter a focus on financial success over emotional substance. Lisa, perhaps you've forgotten, but love and respect cannot be purchased. While I might not have a fortune, I possess a heart filled with love and commitment. Isn't that of greater value? We're not destitute. It's high time everyone matured beyond this materialistic view. Following my remarks, Lisa's frustration boiled over. That's rather ironic coming from you, Paul. It seems you're the one who needs to mature. Sure. Love doesn't cover the bills or the groceries. Yes, love matters, but let's be realistic, Paul. In today's world, financial stability is crucial. A man's worth is questioned if he can't provide sufficiently. Our arguments escalated rapidly, each filled with more bitterness and resentment than the last. We hurled accusations and insults at each other, damaging our fragile relationship further. The details are too much to delve into, but suffice it to say, things got excessively heated. I found myself saying things that were harsher than I'd ever imagined, driven by frustration and exhaustion with the situation. One day, Emily pulled me aside, her expression of a mix of confusion and pain. It was evident in her eyes. 
Despite feeling a bit taken aback by her surprise at the situation, it seemed obvious to me given her and her mother's actions. Paul, why are you so harsh with my mom? She's only trying to look out for us. You need to stop this rudeness. It's becoming too much. Taking a moment to collect my thoughts, I prepared myself for the difficult conversation ahead. Emily, I have to be honest with you. My feelings for you have changed. Our marriage has devolved into constant arguments about money and respect. We're just not on the same page and it doesn't seem like we ever will be. I believe it's time for us to consider divorce. Paul, you can't be serious. We've built a life together. What about our dreams, our plans? Emily responded, clearly shocked. Dreams evolve and so do people. I can't continue pretending everything's okay. We both deserve a chance at happiness and since I can no longer provide that for you, ending things might be the best option. I hope we can part without resentment. It's just too much for me to bear any longer. And with those words, it felt like a bomb had detonated between us, leaving nothing but ruins in its wake. Our marriage disintegrated, leaving a trail of broken vows and lost hopes. It was a painful acknowledgement, but it was time for us to pursue our happiness separately. Things between us had spiraled downward, creating an atmosphere so tense it felt like navigating through a field of shattered glass with each step. To mitigate further discomfort and give each other some much-needed space, we concurred it was wise for me to pack up and find a new temporary home during the divorce proceedings. It was a tough call, yet essential for us to find some clarity and peace amidst the chaos we found ourselves in. Sometimes stepping away is the only way to see things. So, there I was, enjoying a semblance of freedom and solitude, when out of nowhere, a message arrived that completely flipped my world on its head. It was from a great uncle, a distant relative I barely remembered. The news was unexpected. His wife, my direct relative, had passed away and left me an astonishing inheritance of $4 million. Naturally, skepticism was my first reaction. The situation felt surreal, almost like one of those too-good-to-be-true scams. I hesitated, filled with doubt. My family ties were so thin that I wasn't even sure who was still around. With a mix of curiosity and disbelief, I demanded proof, half expecting to uncover a scammer at work. But then, the evidence was laid before me. Official documents and legal confirmations, all pointing to the truth of this inheritance. It was a moment of pure astonishment. Life had thrown me an unexpected lifeline, and suddenly I was standing at home base with the winning run. The impact of this windfall was overwhelming. Just moments before, I was grappling with the everyday pressures of financial stress, doing my best to stay afloat. And now, in an instant, everything had changed. I was an overnight millionaire, drowning in a sea of emotions ranging from disbelief to gratitude. It's funny how quickly news spreads in a small town. Before I knew it, everyone was talking. Suddenly, the news of my soon-to-be millionaire status was everywhere capturing the attention of practically everyone in town, including folks I hadn't spoken to in years. It felt like they all emerged from nowhere, each hoping for a piece of my good fortune. Amidst the whirlwind of attention, I found myself needing a moment to pause and reflect on the implications. Money, as enticing as it is, carries its own set of complexities. It can indeed bring joy, but it's also capable of complicating life in unexpected ways. With this in mind, I tread carefully, fully aware that financial freedom doesn't equate to happiness. Just as I was adjusting to my newfound independence, living away from Emily, a call from Lisa, my soon-to-be ex-mother-in-law, came out of the blue. She wasted no time inquiring about my financial windfall, her voice practically twinkling with unspoken greed. Her sudden interest left me skeptical. Lisa, you're reaching out now because of my impending wealth? Despite my reservations, she proceeded to invite me over for a family dinner, claiming it was an opportunity for a final gathering before Emily and I officially parted ways. I couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of the situation, especially since I had made it clear that the bridge between Emily, Lisa, and me was already burned. Nevertheless, Lisa persisted, skillfully playing on sentiments to lure me into accepting the invitation. She painted a picture of a nostalgic evening filled with cherished memories likely masking her true motives behind a facade of sincerity. It was a dilemma on the one hand. I wanted to steer clear of any further drama and manipulation. But on the other, I felt a compelling need for closure and to confront the situation head on. Ultimately, 
Curiosity won me over, and despite my initial reluctance, I found myself agreeing to attend the dinner. I was curious to see just how far Lisa would go. Arriving at the dinner, I was greeted like a celebrity, with Emily's extended family showering me with an unexpectedly warm welcome. The moment news of my fortune broke out, I became the town's latest sensation, drawing attention from corners I didn't even know existed. It was as if I'd struck gold. Well, in a manner of speaking, I had. Amidst the sudden spotlight, Lisa approached with a smirk, her demeanor reminiscent of a cat that had snagged the ultimate prize. Her saccharine voice couldn't mask the underlying deceit, but I played it cool, my skepticism clear. Then, in a dramatic entrance fit for a movie, Emily, my ex, made her presence known. Our eyes locked, swirling with emotions that were hard to pinpoint. Regret, longing, or perhaps something else. But I was determined not to get swept up in any psychological games. The dinner that followed felt like a scene from a surreal drama, with forced smiles and a spread worthy of royalty, yet underlined by a web of hidden motives. As the evening progressed, I found myself unwittingly at the center of attention, the newfound golden boy, eliciting laughter and admiration. The irony of how wealth could shift perceptions wasn't lost on me, exposing a layer of greed and envy beneath the veneer of celebration. This revelation of true colors left a bitter taste, highlighting the superficial nature of these interactions. Was all this worth it? Now, brace yourself for the twist. Lisa, ever the schemer, pulled me aside with a proposal cloaked in concern. With a sly grin, she laid out her grand vision for reconciliation, claiming Emily, and she had seen the error of their ways, now recognizing my value. But I wasn't about to be duped by her charade. I saw through the veil of her flattery and empty promises, yet instead of outright dismissal, I decided to entertain her plot, feigning intrigue. This wasn't just about deflecting. It was about turning the tables and engaging in a bit of my strategic play. So, with a smirk mirroring her own, I entertained her proposal, curious to see how this game would unfold. I chose to entertain the idea of reuniting with Emily, but decided to add a unique twist to the narrative. This time, I aimed to seize control and orchestrate a revelation that would leave everyone speechless. With a sly smile, I instructed Lisa to gather the entire family at the dining table under the guise of an important announcement. She, believing she had triumphed, eagerly complied, not suspecting the surprise I had in store. As I sat at the table, surrounded by curious and whispering relatives, I relished the suspense in the air. They were all oblivious to the shock I was about to deliver. When the moment of revelation finally came, with the room's anticipation at its peak, I stood, glass in hand, ready to unveil the unexpected. Ladies and gentlemen, I began, capturing the undivided attention of every person present. Many of you have speculated about Emily and me, wondering if there's a chance for us to reignite the spark we once shared. Well, I'm thrilled to announce that. I'm remaining single. The room instantly filled with sighs of disappointment and murmurs of confusion. They had naively hoped I'd succumb to their pleas, envisioning a fairy tale reconciliation. But I refused to be swayed by their insincere concerns, which had only surfaced after learning of my newfound wealth. Meeting their gazes one by one, I silently conveyed my disdain for their foolish expectations, reminding them of their past disregard and mistreatment. Just months ago, I was either invisible to you or treated with disdain. How can I believe in your sudden change of heart? I challenged. Lisa and Emily, desperate, shifted into overdrive, pleading for my return to the family fold. They offered apologies and promises of change, begging for another chance. But their words fell on deaf ears. I was done with their manipulations and feigned affections. Amidst their frantic attempts to reel me back in, I stood my ground, declaring my final departure from their lives. Walking away from that house, their pleas became a distant echo. That moment marked a significant turning point for me, liberating me from their toxic influence and allowing me to embark on a journey of self-discovery and independence. As I stepped into the cool night air, a profound sense of freedom enveloped me. Taking a deep breath, I savored the sweet taste of autonomy, a feeling tinged with both bitterness and triumph. From that point forward, I vowed to reclaim my life, seeking happiness on my terms, surrounded by those who truly value and love me for who I am. And so, my story unfolds, leaving behind the chaos of that tumultuous dinner. Back at my place, I awaited the arrival of the inheritance, 
thinking that would close the chapter on a tumultuous part of my life. But that was wishful thinking. Lisa and Emily, unable to let go, bombarded me with calls and texts, pleading for a second chance and promising change, a concept they seemed to barely grasp. Their words felt hollow, a tired script of manipulation I had grown all too familiar with. So, I took a definitive step. I blocked their numbers, severing the ties that had bound me to their toxicity for far too long. When the inheritance finally became mine, the reality was as surreal as the moment I first learned of it. Armed with this financial boon, I was determined not to become a cautionary tale like those lottery winners who squandered their fortunes. Aware of the dangers that newfound wealth could bring, especially in a small town where everyone knows your business, I decided it was time for a fresh start elsewhere. Leaving behind the familiar yet oppressive surroundings, I embarked on a new journey. I changed my name, relocated to a different state, and embraced the anonymity and freedom that came with it. It was a breath of fresh air, a chance to redefine my life on my terms. Curiosity occasionally leads me to check in on Emily's social media, which now reads like a desperate plea for attention and financial support. Her attempts at allure, aimed at finding someone to replace what she thought she had with me, are both sad and mildly amusing. Despite the spectacle, I harbor no ill will and hope she finds what she's looking for, in whatever form that may take. As for me, life has taken on a new rhythm. The experience has taught me that genuine contentment doesn't stem from wealth or toxic relationships, but from the peace and independence I found away from that drama. Sure, money has its perks, it can buy luxury and ease, but it's no substitute for a life filled with genuine relationships and personal fulfillment. That's the true essence of a life well lived, far removed from the shallow pursuits and chaotic entanglements of my past. So, from my new vantage point, I savor the simplicity and tranquility of a life unencumbered by other people's expectations and dramas.